Welcome to Mongols, brought to you by the Beautiful Game Network. We're going to spend the next hour talking about how amazing Wakanda Forever looks. Josh, your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> it does look pretty awesome, not going to lie. Yeah. Kev, have you seen the trailer? Mm-hmm. You've seen sure. Nonplus by it. Just I don't know. Up. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no tears, no like, you know. Nah, I'm dead inside. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of knew that. So that's fine. Um, so beyond, you know, all of the, the Marvel craziness, guys, what uh, what went on this weekend, Kev? What, what happened? Don't, nothing. Nothing. Nothing ever <laughs> happens. Oh, the only, okay, so now the only commentary I can have is like, it's now gotten to the point in the summer where it's just too hot to do anything. Like Riley and I were both like, okay, well, like we even planned indoor things. And then it got midday on Saturday and we're like, Nope, I don't even want to step outside. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I mean, it's just getting like mid to high nineties with ridiculous humidity. So like heat, in, heat index, like, you know, one Oh five, one Oh six. And it's just like, Oof. all right, I'm good. So <laughs> yeah, that's the we, we, pre- we do, we do morning activities and then hibernate for the rest of the day. It wasn't as bad in Pittsburgh, but uh, I got caught in a pretty wicked storm mm-hmm. uh, at Kennywood on Saturday, right before the game. We The plan was go to Kennywood for the morning slash afternoon, come home in time for the game, and it ended up being a little bit longer. So I was actually watching the game in the backseat of a car <laughs> uh, for the first half. Got to watch the second half uh, uh, at my house. But yeah, the storm at Kennywood, it was like, high winds like saw branches falling running to the pavilion that was it was interesting but uh yeah anytime it rains i have like ptsd back to when there was that microburst at kennywood it was uh, oh yeah 2001 2002 sometime around there i was working there for the summer i was there for like three weeks and yeah like the top of the whip fell and it was like a whole thing so now it's just like I see people like jumping over branches, like weed. I'm like, get the hell out! Like, go home. <laughs> no, we uh, did not ride any rides during the storm, but everyone did go home. And afterwards, the line for the steel curtain was like non-existent. So, read that for the first time. That was a fun roller coaster. I don't think I've done that yet. It was it was worthwhile. Yeah. Oh yeah. It it was great. I would definitely ride it. Again. It was probably the smoothest roller coaster I've ridden in a very long time. As far as like just. Like, yeah, it's thrilling. It goes upside down, all that kind of stuff. The corkscrews, it's really fast. But, like, I was really surprised it wasn't, like, jerking me around the whole time. I was like, oh, this is kind of nice. So. And that, I guess that replaced the log jam. Yeah. I believe. Yeah, yeah. So I haven't been back since the log jammer's been removed. So we need to do that. Um, boycotting. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Taking a hard stance. Yeah. Pro log jammer, for sure. Um, is it Bring log back jammer? Garfield. Is it log jam? I don't know. Well, it's I'm log from Ohio. Jammer. Yeah, log it's jammer. Yeah, yeah. It's log jammer. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, for those of you who were watching live, uh, apologies. It seems that we're having some video issues where you're just sort of seeing both Kevin and Josh from like upper lip up, and you don't get to see me at all, which is a plus for you. But um, yeah, uh, Josh just adjusted his camera. I don't know what's going on with the with the stream, but whatever. We've got audio. I don't really care. Um, guys, there was. Tons. I mean, the, the the title of this episode is surprise, 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 surprise. Uh, the Hounds had teased sort of a big announcement this week, and they did not disappoint. We got news that Robbie Mertz has uh, has re-signed for the club from Atlanta. Just immediate Josh thoughts. I say Robbie Mertz. You say. No, I'm I'm super excited for this. I mean, uh, we'll we'll talk about why I'm super excited about it uh, when we talk about this game. But like in general, Robbie Mertz, like I thought he was a great player, and I think he's going to add a lot to this team. Um, kind of sad because I was hoping that you know we would see him in an MLS side uh, after he left here. That was the only way that I kind of felt okay about him leaving. I'm like, he's leaving for a two team. He's trying to go for the first team, like. See him on the MLS side, that it'll be, you know, I completely understand that. But uh having him play against us uh if with Atlanta too, it's like, I don't know. Okay, come back. Like if you're not gonna be playing for the first team, then there's no reason to be there. And that's exactly what he did. So I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah. Kev, did you have any ideas that this would be Rob- that Robbie Mertz was coming back? No, I mean, yeah. I'm- why would well I, that's a good point, actually. No. Like I was gonna say, why would we? But yeah, I mean, Josh just laid out the point of like 
you know, if you're just playing for Atlanta too, then, you know, you can, you can reassess your like, kind of like, I don't know. I, I, I'm sure before going to Atlanta, he probably did some kind of risk assessment in his head of like, okay, well, there's a certain percentage of chance that I'll play for Atlanta. I'm willing to take that chance. And then, you know, if it doesn't work out, whatever. Um, so yeah, in some ways maybe it was eventually expected, but yeah, no, I'm super happy. I mean, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect about how soon he'd be integrated into the squad. Obviously he, you know, he's in the game day squad and then comes on the second half. So, um, good to see him back. Looked good. And, uh, you know, he could be a definitive thing for us, you know, at the second half of the season here. We all, you know, say that we didn't really know, but subconsciously, did we? Listen very closely to our intro for one second. Did you catch that? You caught that, right? (laughs) I I never never realized that. I thought yeah. you were just going to have like an edited version where you're just like Robbie Mertz. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, we nope. called it. <laughs> but I mean, I think that also means that Matt Geick is coming back now, right? I mean, that's that's kind of... Yeah. And was that Paul Child as well that yells brilliant so, yeah. at the end? So yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Hounsy did a good job this past week talking about um, with the new president coming into the team and with the stands getting to the point where we're starting to fill up more and more on a weekly basis how that could sort of push the hounds to expand the the stadium um to to add in more capacity maybe bring back some announcers i know that matt has moved unfortunately but um who knows we'll see but yeah so robbie mertz so did, just to, so did robbie mertz so you know. I, this is very <laughs> true. robbie mertz also moved um just to sort of throw some stats out there. So one of the big things that uh, everyone around the league was sort of touting when Robbie came to join us is that we're getting another assist leader uh, for the league. So Kenny is currently tied for first in the league with eight assists. Mertz now has seven and Dixon has six. So we have, you know, right there in sort of our front line guys who love to distribute the ball um, and are in the top three, essentially uh, tied for first, second and third. Uh, in the league, which is awesome. If you sort of look back to his statistics, for those who don't remember Mertz being here, he was with us in basically 2019 and 2020. During that time, he had four assists in both season, five and seven goals. So you're looking at sort of that sweet spot right there. Um, When he was at Atlanta uh, in 2021, he had no goals, but he had five assists. Already this season, he has three goals and seven assists. So he's already outdoing his assist output, and we're barely halfway through the season. And he has three goals, which is more than half of what he normally averages. Um, So he's on pace for his best year yet. Uh, In addition to that, he was Atlanta's captain. And there were a few times that he captained our squad. He mentioned when he came back that, you know, he's he's been in touch with Bob. Um, He remembers and is friends with Griffin and Rivera and Kenny. And so just coming right back and playing with those guys has been fantastic. So yeah, I, honestly, no idea that this was happening. Um, super thrilled about it because I remember, you know, at the end of every season, we do our recap and like, who would you, who's the number one player you want to see stay? And for those two years, it was Robbie Mertz. Like, we, we need to have Robbie back. And, uh, and, and the fact that he has now come back home um, is amazing. So really, really good stuff there. Um, guys, one other thing before we get into the game, just it's like a note about a non-note. Uh, the USL held their midseason league wide meetings this past week, and we've literally heard nothing. In the past, there's been talk. There's been talk about pro rel. There's been talk about switching the season to a fall or spring schedule, and literally, there's been nothing. Jake Edwards has done a few interviews. Um, he did an interview with Backheeled, where he pretty much said, yeah, pro rel at some point, and yeah, fall, spring, we're going to try it with the Women's Super League, and there's more hurdles we need to cross for the guys, but otherwise nothing. So, you know, that's typically been a point, uh, or those meetings have typically been a point where we'll grab some headlines and be able to talk about some interesting things the USL is doing, and there's nothing that I heard of at this point. So, um, yeah, just throwing that out there. Um. Guys, as we've already alluded to, the Hounds go to Fraudford, or is it Heart Fraud? Josh, where do you land on that? Uh, well, first, I land on... 
Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Like so open the yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So uh, <laughs> I patiently waited. You know, yes, I didn't say did. anything. Ten minutes, man. <laughs> Ten minutes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's uh, really cool. Fraudford. I think it's better. It sounds better. You like Fraudford? Fraudford. Kev, where yeah. do you stand? Fraudford or heart fraud? Fraudford. Yeah. It rolls off the tongue. It you know, does. And Mike, I got to give you credit. That like legitimately, like you, it sounded like you were in training for like a BBC reporter. You're like, <laughs> the way you kind of read that heart fraud, or I forget, I, now I even forget heart fraud or fraud furred. I don't know. The way you said it, you delivered it really well. It's really... Like BBC? Yeah, it's got to give you props. I mean, you didn't have a British accent, and BBC <laughs> was the first news organization I could think of, but you know. Okay. NPR would have worked, you know. Yeah, NPR would have worked. Okay. No, I was, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to think of like what I would sound like in a British accent and I immediately just forgot and stopped. Like I'm not even going to try. So do it, Mike. Do oh, it. Right. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Anyway, so we get a 2-1 win after a stoppage time shocker from Shane Wheat. And, uh, you know, the first goal came from Cicerone with an assist from Mertz, which, you know, we'll get to. Wheat with a stoppage time stunner. Kev, I'll start with you on the takeaways. Give me something that, uh, that you took away from this game. Uh, my takeaway is that I think... 20 percent of this is legitimate. Eighty percent of it, I'm joking. I think Shane Wheat might be our best finisher. Like, period. Like from from in the this past goal, three weeks. I know. I mean, like his his goal that he got two weeks ago was also ridiculous. It wasn't, you know, like so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, put him at striker. Like, what? You know, we don't really have an issue scoring goals. I'm 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 joking. But like he, yeah, no. I mean, I think this game, um good for so many reasons uh, we outplayed them to a ridiculous level um hold on if hold on would... on on that note and let me just throw up the game flow real quick mm -hmm. so you mentioned that we outplayed them to a ridiculous level our xg in this game was almost four goals like it was almost expected that we would get four goals their xg was 0 0.03 <laughs> they still ended up with one, but like that sort of sort of shows you the disparity there between, you know, how we played four goals to zero point zero three. Continue. Kev. Oh, yeah, it's good. Good graphic and good numbers. Um, yeah, no, I mean, we were we were just so much better than them. And I think that there are times throughout a season where games like this can happen and it can it can end in a draw or something, you know, like if, if this would have ended in a draw, it would have been very sad <laughs> I mean, because we were that much better than them. Um, you know, they score a stunner. It wasn't even that they just had one good passage of play and then they scored off it. They scored off of just, you know, a shot that goes in one out of a hundred times. Um, and then it felt like we were just knocking on the door, like left, right and center. And we just couldn't do, we just couldn't finish it. And so, yeah, I mean, it. this felt like a game that was going to end with such a bitter taste in our mouth. And it ended up being, you know, an insane ending to to the game. I mean, stop a shine winner by your center back with top corner. I mean, what else What else do you want? This, that's the perfect game. <laughs> at, at the moment, I sent a message to the Mongols chat and I just said, WTF, was he even doing that far up the field at that moment? And to Liz's credit, she just wrote back, winning and i was like <laughs> yeah that's that's fair can't really argue with that but dang josh what would what, you think yeah i'm thinking like only eating wheat bread from now on probably <laughs> only eating wheaties in the morning um uh, you know i'm on that wheat train completely at this point uh no it was like yeah he only scores bangers like that's mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's amazing uh and yeah, like I remember thinking at halftime, we're gonna win. Like I'm not, I'm not worried. Like even though when it was no when it goals, was still nil nil, yeah, 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 nil nil. And then when we went one down, I was like, I know we have at least one goal in us. Like I, I know that we're gonna get at least a point. I'm gonna be very disappointed if we only get a point though, because like, like even being one down, I wasn't like, oh, we might lose this. I was like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna score. I just hope we have two goals in us. And, you know, so at no point in this whole game was I like, we're going to lose. Like, and that's been a while since I've been like, you know, usually I'm thinking like, up, 
these things happen, you know, I should expect like it, it doesn't mean we're going to get a goal, even though we have all these opportunities. I definitely knew we were getting a goal in this game. I was surprised by the halftime substitutions. I I wasn't expecting Mertz to come on that early. When I saw he wasn't starting, I it, I figured if he was going to come on, like if he would have been starting, I wouldn't have been completely surprised. I would have been like, okay, that makes sense. You know, he knows the system. He knows a lot of the players. Like, he can get slotted in pretty easily. But when he didn't start, I'm like, oh, okay. We'll probably see him, you know, normal 75th minute substitution type of situation. So when he didn't come on, or when he came on at halftime, I was like, okay, something's going on. And Cicerone coming on as well. I was like, okay, like, we're we're stepping on the gas. And yeah. sure enough, that, that was... <laughs> it, it's, it's also kind of funny the the way the substitutions are, you know, the ones at halftime are the ones who scored the first goal. So it's pretty cool. Wait, Josh, yeah. you were saying you expected uh, substitutions at halftime? No, 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 no. I wasn't expecting the substitution. Mm. I was expecting us to win, but I was not expecting the substitutions at halftime. Right. I was kind of surprised by changing the format. Like, I don't know, with, with Bob, I, I always feel like, you know, he goes in with a formation that he wants with the people players that he wants and he kind of sometimes i feel like is stubborn about switching things out and trying something else uh when they're not working it's more of a like you know power through it you guys can do this you know get in shape do it and he expects them to like figure it out and this one it's like "Mm, no okay something's not working what we're gonna make the halftime substitutions um which i'm fine with i mean that's also a perfectly good strategy if you know it's not working and you know you have more better tools in the toolbox use them yeah especially late in the game it felt like we almost had two different teams out there we sort of had our front four that were just constantly attacking and looked super dangerous which was really exciting and entertaining to have those four guys running at the goal constantly was great but then there was like this big disconnect between them and the back six And I think one thing that I'd like to see the team hash out over the course of this week and next week is by doing that, it almost completely neutralized Danny Griffin. Like Danny Griffin just sort of vanished from the play. He just became part of that back six that was just kind of there. And I'd love to see him more involved and sort of being that link between the two lines. I don't know how much of that was just Hartford sitting back and just giving our guys free reign to just run at them. But I would hate to see Robbie Mertz come and thrive at the expense of Griffin taking more of a backseat, which may be a good thing. I mean, Griffin hasn't like he's played every game for the past two or three years. So, you know, he's due for a rest, but I don't think he's resting. I think he'll, he'll just play a different role. Yeah. Yeah. And so we'll see what happens there. Um, the other thing I was I was interested in your thoughts. This was the first that we saw of Kiza as well, um, who I, I the first time I saw the back of his jersey, I saw a K and then Iza, and I immediately thought Killer Pizza for some reason. And now every time I see him, all I can think of is Killer Pizza. It's bizarre. I don't expect it to stick. I'm not expecting anybody else to say it, but for me, it's, he's now Killer Pizza. Um, it always goes back to pizza with Mike. I mean, it always goes back special. to pizza. Everything goes yep. back to pizza. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I need a victory pizza. Like, yeah, you need to work this out. This is like some (laughs) stuff, you know? Yeah. 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 It's a thing. Um, What was your guys' thoughts on Kiza? Josh, what'd you think? Good. Yeah. I mean, there wasn't a lot to go off of here, but I I do think he he played well, was fun to watch, and I'm excited to see what else we can, you know, do for the team and how we kind of fit them all in. I did feel like with Mertz and Kiza coming on, I, I was a little bit worried that, like, a lot of new pieces, a lot of new stuff happening. Like, is this the right time to do it? Like, I don't know. I was a little bit worried about that just because like it was a game where I, I wanted the three points and I wasn't sure if this was the time to kind of like, all right, guys, let's whole new line, not whole new lineup, but you know, a pretty fresh lineup and be like, yeah. all right, let's, let's do it. So I was a little bit worried about bringing him in um, and Merce for that matter, uh, but yeah. it worked out. So Kev, what'd you think? Really impressed. I mean, I I think I, I mean, I don't know. I'll I'll back myself up a little bit here and say maybe understandably, but I didn't I didn't expect much from him at all. I I could have seen him as one of those people who we sign and never steps on the field. I I just didn't know. And um, yeah, I mean, what he he's direct. 
he has no issue, you know, running at defenders and he has speed to use. Um, and him, you know, him being direct led to Wheat getting his goal in stoppage time. I mean, he he runs at defenders. He kind of, you know, bobbles the ball through them, lays it off to Kenny, and Kenny, you know, lays it on a plate for Wheat. So, yeah, no, I, I, I mean, in the fact that what? Sorry, I, maybe you guys already mentioned this. I just didn't hear it. But like, was there a reason why Kelly wasn't on the bench? I mean, the fact that Kiza gets in over Kelly is you know telling and and he contributed i mean so yeah i i don't know to what extent kiza will break in the starting lineup but yeah i mean he looked he looked good also i mean I, I, just as a like i, I want to talk about it eventually we can keep talking about kiza too but um having dixon start up front uh, and not not at a wing back i can't recall too many other times that's happened this season maybe one other time but that's i thought that was kind of interesting too yeah no, the only thing I'll say about Kiza is that he sort of reminded me of just a broader shouldered uh, Dequa. Like he seemed to have energy. He seemed to have pace. He's running at players. He's trying to make stuff happen. He just seemed to be a bit of a bigger body. Um, for some reason, Lukaku came to mind. He's not like Lukaku, but just a bigger body that's tougher to deal with was sort of, I was getting shades of that. So it will be interesting to sort of see how he works his way in. Um, real quick, just <laughs> you mentioned how Kiza sort of, you know, ran his way through a couple of players and laid it off to Kenny. Can you imagine being Kenny and having the goal in front of you and what, I guess hearing Shane wheat yell from over your shoulder, like pass it to yeah. me, pass it to me. And you, and you as Kenny, like, all right, here we go. <laughs> and just like sliding it off the, we, we, I made a joke on, on Twitter that uh, earlier in the game, Shane had like ripped a shot and it went wide. And I said that Shane wheat desperately wants to be a striker. And uh, so when he actually did score, we retweeted and just said, you know, this aged really poorly. And, and Shane responded that maybe in another lifetime he he wanted to be a striker. But uh, yeah, not this one. So it's making it happen. I mean, I don't know. Hey, let's just not put it out. Of, you know, he's a big body. He can headball well. You know, he thinks like yeah. a defender. So, you know. So, Kev, you want to talk about Dixon? Yeah, no. I mean, so I thought... I mean, once again, I don't know. I, I think Dixon's incredible. Like, I, I just, I, mm-hmm. I feel like we need to say that every week. But how versatile he is, um, how smart he is on the ball, how he sees passes, and, and how he gets into positions is great. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just thought it was interesting how what it felt. It's probably like eighty to ninety percent of the time he's playing wing back. Mm-hmm. Is this the only other position he's played? I can't. There, there was one game where he sort of slotted more centrally as the game went on. It was like an in-game adjustment that he slid inside and he had somebody overlapping on the outside, but I can't remember right. who that was. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just, he, I thought that was interesting. Where we have, you know, Kiza comes in, Cicerone starts on the bench. You know, Dequa seems to be really the only long-term consistent as far as like starting and position in the front line. Um, I thought it was interesting. Yeah. I, I don't know what, what Bob saw against Hartford. Maybe it was, I mean, because both Dequa and Dixon are probably our fastest uh, forwards. And so I don't know if he saw something where, you know, we can get in behind them or that they maybe press out in their space and behind or something. But um, I noticed uh, early on, and this continued with when Mertz came on the field. Um, one one of the one of those questions that we got is just, now it's just always in my head for the rest of the season. I'm going to look for it. But one of the questions we got from uh, the recording um, was about how we like pressed up or dropped deep or whatever. And in this game, I think especially when Mertz came on, it kind of it, Mertz and Cicerone came on. The dial got turned up a little bit more, but. Um, to me, it, it looked obvious like we, we didn't want to give Hartford any uh, Hartford's defenders any time on the ball. Um, and the few occasions where they did go long, um, you know, our defenders were put in positions where they were maybe, you know, if not one on one, you know, kind of like three on four kind of thing where it's, you know, maybe they have an extra person, but that's it. And then it's just kind of you have to defend pretty, pretty well in one on one situations. So, I just thought that was interesting. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think Dixon can, can kind of play anywhere until 
he'll put up the numbers and the and the chances that that he usually does. I thought it was funny after Hartford scored and we took our kickoff, it was like a bunch of kids that it was like, okay, we're going now. And like the announcer made, made the call that it, it seemed like the sleeping giant had been awoken, but literally we took the, the kickoff and it was just four players just storming ahead. Like there was nothing that was going to stop them from getting from midfield to that 18 yard, yard box. Uh, it was, it was borderline comical how quickly they were just like, nope, we're not messing around anymore. Let's go. Let's get this done. And so that mentality is fantastic. It seemed like Mertz, once he did come in, he, he was at the top of a midfield triangle where you had Griffin and Kenny sort of at the back in the holding, which it works. I mean, the, the Cicerone's goal was a, a pass from Dixon to Mertz who really skied it and Cicerone just climbed the ladder and headed it in. Um, yeah, I, I think that, that foursome, um, you know, whether it's Deco or Keys or whoever else that's in there, but the Cicerone, Mertz, Dixon combination, and then you start getting Kenny running into those spots. You start getting Danny Griffin running into those spots is going to be very interesting for the rest of the season, especially the more that they gel. So really looking forward to seeing, you know, um, Robbie back on Highmark. Highmark's turf this weekend and sort of see what sort of show he puts on with the rest of the Mertz family. I'm sure they're tailgating and selling out. Say, so. do, you th- do you think he goes right in the starting lineup? Ooh. I, I After so. that performance, I kind of think so. Josh is nodding as well. I kind of think so. Yeah, I, I, I can totally see it happening. I would not be surprised at all. Uh, I wanted to make the one joke that we I made when I first saw the, the Mertz signing. Uh, yeah, I, I didn't know if maybe ticket sales were lagging, so they figured they got brought Mertz back. Uh, the Mertz family would add a, another 30 tickets at least. Right. Uh, yep. <laughs> maybe up to 50. We'll see. Uh, so yep. that's going to be a, a fun time. Uh, but yeah, like yeah. I can totally see him starting. Like he played for 45 minutes in this match. He, you know, and that was like his first week here. So I could totally see that after him being here for a couple weeks now. He's he's gonna be integrated in. Uh, it'll be interesting to see the the shakeup in the lineup with him and with Kiza. I mean, like to see what happens there. And you know, we've been talking about how Dane Kelly's for some reason fallen out of favor and like hasn't been performing as well. And I don't know if his injury. I don't know what's going on. But like, yeah, there could be some shakeups, and it's gonna be interesting. I it's been a while. You know, well, I say a while, but like couple months since we've uh kind of felt a little bit unsure about who's making the starting lineup what's going on here so it's back to that but it's a good problem to have because i i do feel like this team is a lot stronger now uh than it was last week i mean can you imagine it realistically there's a scenario where dane kelly who i believe has seven goals in the season so far is our third string forward i mean statistically yeah statistically he's still ranked up there as one of our top goal scorers. Cicerone is our top goal scorer. I think he has nine, so he's getting ready to hit double digits. So if that happens this weekend, you know, set off the fireworks. But yeah, it that's that's pretty crazy um, for sure. But I agree. I, I think if Mertz had come on like the last 10 minutes, the last 15 minutes, then I might be like, okay, like maybe he's not going to start. But to your point, Josh, he came on at halftime. Like there's, Bob has full faith in him. This is not like Highmark Stadium is new to him. So he's going to just pop right back in. And yeah, I'd be surprised if he doesn't start this week. Came in at halftime and got the assist for the and first got the assist. Game. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like he came in at halftime and didn't perform. Like, he he did his job and he almost he scored. The there was there was a play yeah. where was it Dixon or Cicero? somebody crossed it and Mertz was like on his knees in front of the keeper. And had he been, you know, just a foot off, he probably would have buried it. It just went straight to the keeper. He's pretty so, short. Short. Are you sure he was on his knees? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> low, low blow, Josh. Low blow. I'm short too. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. Wait for the uh, handshake line this weekend. Let's see how that goes for you. <laughs> Speaking of, oh, wait. Any insight on Cicerone's uh, celebration? Mm-mm. Uh, like he did, like yeah, he put his hand all the way on the ground. I didn't know what's yeah. going on there. Like I know, yeah. I completely understand. Uh, Wheat's celebration now. Dig it out of the goal. Like Dig he does the, the goal, shovel. Yeah. That's his. That's his thing now. Yeah. Uh, who was it? Was it Williams that uh retweeted the goal and said, "Dig it out!" Like all in all capital letters. Yeah, yeah, 
Yeah. I don't know if Cicerone was making light of like him skying over the defender. That's what I thought when I saw him, like it was almost like he was taunting the defender that he jumped over top of him. Cause I think the defender's taller than he is. And Cicerone, yeah. it, it looked like he was a whole like head and shoulders above him. Yeah. He was so way up there. yeah, but maybe not. I don't know. We'll have to maybe try to find out this weekend. Um, ask him like, what was that about? So yeah, we'll get Steve on it. Guys, any other takeaways from, uh, from this one? Before we sort of look at uh, what this means, it was it was a fun match. Like yeah. even the first half with no goals, like it was fun to watch. And I, you know, obviously it's against Frogford, so it's it doesn't say very much, but it's just it's still it, it's become so fluid for you. Just it's just there. <laughs> yeah, but still, like it, it's good to see and and the building momentum with this team and just like you know getting that confidence back. And I'm I'm just excited to see what we what we can bring to Tulsa. Uh, well, when Tulsa comes here, I should say right. Uh. Yeah, I agreed. Kev, any other takeaways for this one? The only thing I was thinking is like, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I keep trying to put a narrative th- like throughout the entire, like from start up until now about how the season's going. And I'm trying, I'm trying to like, I don't know, look back and think about what that, what those six games kind of meant for us when we went six winless three straight losses lost one high mark i mean is that you know what are we saying that's just completely a blip we put it out of our minds there's that has no influence on what this team is capable of for the rest of the season or is this just like i don't know like do they have that in their their back pocket i'm just i'm just trying to think like okay is that just completely behind us don't worry about it this team's amazing you know we we, you know, statistically could have and might have won this game four nil, even three nil, um, you know, with with the run that we're on right now. I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I don't feel confident saying anything about this team anymore because <laughs> I feel like we were really good, and then we had six games where everything collapsed, and now we're great again. And I just, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if you, I, either of you have any, uh, I don't know, insights on. Are you asking me if I have anxiety? Because I can tell you the answer <laughs> yeah, sure. constantly about everything. So, like, that doesn't really help. But I will say, like, the game we collapsed at home was against the Rowdies. You know what I mean? Like, it, yeah. it's not like we, you know, fell. It wasn't like the Charleston Battery game at home. I was going to say, we did lose 3 nothing in the Battery, though. I know. So, but I'm yeah. saying, like, like uh, there's a little bit to keep in mind there. Like, we're talking about Tampa Bay, who has how many have they won in a row now? Like they're at least up to five wins in a row right now. Like they're they're hot. Like yeah. So it, it's it, I don't really feel that worried about that. At least our home record that's the only game we've lost at home. So that that makes me feel you know a little bit better. Obviously, the other games we lost and drew it, it wasn't great, but I mean in the last five games we've had one draw and four wins. Like it's it's kind of hard to look back and be like, Oh no, I don't know. This form could be, you know, <laughs> like it's a, it's good form. And I, you know, we've talked about this in the past and, and we mentioned this in the last episode, but I also think that settling on a keeper also has a bit to play in terms of the consistency and the defenders knowing who's there and the trust that you have between them. And, you know, whether you think that Jamali Wade is a, a world beater or not, there was nothing he was going to do about that goal that they scored this weekend. I thought, but the rest of the time, in terms uh, of, I don't know, I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. I was just like, <laughs> hold up. Bad. Listen, <laughs> I know you like to be critical of keepers, but there was, that was upper 90 from, I mean, look, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I, hmm. We're not doing this. We're not. I don't we're not know having how this much, conversation about. No, 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 no not about the goal. Not about the goal. Okay. I, I just don't know how to, how much to attribute to Jolly Way. It's one of those where, I mean, once again, what I mean, looking at the stats, Hartford get one shot on target. But I, I think, goes, but I think that his contribution is not insignificant. Yeah. No, I I just don't know how to like measure it, and I'm not seeing right. it obviously in my like with how I'm watching the game. It's it's not just like an obvious kind of like, yeah. I don't know. So I mean, he could be. I you know, it could be very possible that now that the, the back three feel a lot more settled in and comfortable with knowing what's behind them. I just I don't know to what extent that's the case. We say this, and then you know Silva's going to start this weekend against Tulsa, and then just everything is <laughs> out the window. Exactly. But I do think that that some level of consistency is going to help here. I, Kev, to your point, 
you know, I, I have anxiety just like Josh, so I don't know what to expect. I'm always going to go into games thinking that this team, hoping that this team wins, but realistically thinking they could lose this. So I think that the more consistent performances that we can see, Josh, to your point, you know, win four, draw one in the last five, that's a big positive. The the looming question is always how are they do against teams above them in the table? And we'll find out in the next three weeks. We, we're going to have to face Memphis again. So that will be a good litmus test. Sure, you know, you can beat up Fraudford. You can beat up um, New York. Uh, but what happens when the big boys come? And, and that, that will be the real test to sort of see if this formation, if the consistency – if these attackers, if these defenders can all gel in a big game situation and sort of see what happens. And once I see that, then I'll be like, okay, let's talk playoffs. Let's, let's, let's see what we're going to do. Here well, once surely we're, we're talking playoffs. No, 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 hey, no, no. We're, definitely playoffs. I, we're in play. We're in the playoffs, but surely we're home playoffs. Well, I that's, so. that's the question is, I think we are, we're, we're leaning into the standing. So I'm just going to throw them up on the screen real quick. We're currently in fourth place with 37 points. We're now two points ahead of Detroit after Detroit. Bye, Detroit. Two. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> we're running away from them. Um, still above us is Memphis who are two points ahead of us, but they have a game in hand Tampa Bay who are five points ahead of us in Louisville who are a full six points ahead of us with a game in hand. So we have some work to do if we want to catch up to those guys. But uh, Detroit's beneath us at 35. Birmingham is four behind us in sixth. My, the Miami, sorry, is five behind us in seven. And Tulsa is a full 12 points behind us in eighth place. So when we say that, you know, playoffs is looking good, this point playoffs is looking pretty good just because the gap between where we are now and eighth is widening. Uh, and I would expect it to widen even further this weekend after we play Tulsa. But yeah, any, uh, any sort of surprises or anything from the table that interest you guys that you want to talk about, or should we just move it along? I mean, I super, super happy that we're not tied in points with Detroit. That's been mm-hmm. way too long now games upon games where it's just like, us and Detroit are at the same exact amount of points. We were always ahead of them, um, right. but it was still like just unnerving to be like, oh, come on, we got to break away a little bit. And I know it's only two points, but it's still like it, it feels good to have, you know, the extra points there uh, above them. And it's like we're pretty close. I mean, we're one game away from Memphis as far as mm-hmm. points go. So, you know, the fact that we played Memphis in a couple weeks Oh man, that's that's exciting. Like that, that's exciting to know that game could be, you know, the six point swing we need mm-hmm. to to leap over them, and that's mm-hmm. that's going to be awesome. Yeah, agreed. Kev, any other and, takeaways? And, or I was going to say, and Memphis is starting to finally slip um, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. and their and their last five games, what two wins, two losses, and a draw. Most recently, yeah. they drew to Indy this past weekend. Who Indy are currently sitting in ninth after a, after a run of four <laughs> losses. So, yeah, we will see. Um, you know, maybe Tampa, we, we could do with Tampa losing. <laughs> we could we could do with Tampa losing. We could do with Louisville losing for sure. Well, I, I don't know. I still think Louisville's out. Uh, they're they're. I think they have first locked up. I mean, I it's it, which is crazy to say with so many games left, but I I don't know. I mean, thirteen wins, three losses, and four draws is just it's just ridiculous. So, yeah. So that's a look at the standings. We sort of alluded to um, you know what's coming up here the next three games. So before we actually talk about Tulsa in more detail. Just to sort of paint the picture of what to expect, we mentioned Hounds on a hot streak. We have Tulsa at home this weekend. Next weekend, we go and play at Indy, who I mentioned they sort of had a rough go recently, but they did just draw 1-1 with Memphis this week. So we'll keep an eye on sort of how they do this weekend. Maybe they turn a corner. I know that they made some trades for – they made two trades so far this past week, um, I guess hoping to get above that playoff line. They got Terea from – the Rowdies, which is no slouch, and I forget the other trade that happened today, but they're names that you most likely wouldn't recognize anyway. So, um, but just something to keep an eye on. And then we get Memphis at home. So the first game of the season, we played Memphis away. We get Memphis at home. So guys, Tulsa at home, India away, Memphis at home. 
Two of those teams are below the playoff line. Memphis is obviously above us. I am setting the number at eight and a half points. You taking the over or under, Josh? The over or under for eight and a half points. So are we going to win all three? Yep, that's, that's the question. what you're asking me. I think we're... Shoot, I don't like this at all. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I feel good about six points. I feel good about seven points. Eight points is where I'm iffy. So, like, I, I, I don't... So you're taking I'd be under? happy with... I'll take the under, yeah, probably. Okay. But you'd be you say, you're saying you'd be happy with seven? Yeah. I, it's I think like seven, seven or nine. Okay. Yeah. You're happy with seven. Okay. Kev, over or under eight and a half. I think I think I'm I'm the exact same way as Josh. I just I think it's we look good. Mertz is in. Uh, you know, Kiza can be doing bits. We, you know, we've won four out of our last five games. Two, two out of these three games are home games and the away game is as against Indy. So I can see how you paint the narrative that like, yeah, like it's on the cards that we, that we win these next three games. I just think it's unlikely. Like it's just really hard to win three in a row unless you're, you know, Tampa and or Louisville. So um, I'll take the under, but I no, I mean, it's, it's on the cards. I mean, we still look really good at home despite you know tampa historically you know we've been we've been great at home and and the are crap right now so you know we'll see i'm gonna take the over i'm gonna go all nine points i think what will be interesting is that but uh, to interrupt you mike that means that means we'll have one uh, after this would be over in the in the previous eight games we'll have one seven seven and drawn one yeah that's ridiculous (laughs) <laughs> yeah, you listen. Before the season started, we said, "I'm going to use the, the proverbial we as say, all we. of us." <laughs> all of us said that we weren't going to lose a game this season. So yeah. famously, um, we all said that. Yeah, we famously we all, that. we all said that. Not just me. <laughs> all of us said that. Um, yeah, I, and, and you know what? You got to take it one game at a time. And I think you, you can look at past performances, but. Um, no, I think it's I think it's doable. I think what's interesting is when you look at how the Hounds shaped up prior to this past week, what you had very much was the same sort of attacking trio of Dequa, Ciceroni, Dixon that were pushing. And then you sort of slotted Kenny further up the field primarily to make assists. You you weren't having Kenny sort of crash the net to be an outlet for a Dixon or a Ciceroni or a Dequa as well. And I think what's interesting is that I think that Mertz is that kind of player. I think that Mertz will do the assists, but he also will crash the goal. I'd, I'd have to go go back and look and see, you know, when you look at the 2019 through 2022 stats, Kenny's goal output compared to Mertz's, I would guess that Mertz has more goals. It's not significant. It would be like two to five or like three to five, something like that. But I just get the sense that Mertz is more eager to go all out, especially knowing that he has Kenny and Griffin behind him, that I think we're going to see some offensive output that we just haven't seen recently. I mean, our XG was four goals in this game. And Fraudford are bad, but they're not that bad. Like they're not... New York Red Bulls bad. So uh, yeah, I think I'm hoping that we look back after these three games and go, holy crap, like what did we just do here? And <laughs> it'll be the yeah, four games, just, but yeah, like it'll exactly. Be like, yeah. It'll be a great run. And I, I do think our ceiling is a lot higher now. Like I, I do see potential in this team to be excellent. Like I, I think we have all the parts to, to do that. If our, you know, XG wasn't just XG, you know, hopes and dreams, it was right. actually converted <laughs> points, we'd be top of the league. And I have no right. doubt about that. But it's, it's you know, the, the hopes and dreams chart that everyone keeps on quoting, it, it hasn't been coming to fruition with us. Right. So it's, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm hoping we, you know, I don't need to go higher. I just need us to start converting some of those potential goals. Um, and I do think we have the, the parts now to do that. Um but yeah, like I will say, even though I'm I'm taking the under, I actually think Memphis is one of those three points. I I think, 
you know, playing at home, we are super good at home. And I, I do think we can beat Memphis at home. I'm worried about the indie game because mm-hmm. being away and that's not our strongest suit this year. And just, mm-hmm. you know, if we're going to drop points, I think that's yeah, where but we like points. soccer isn't indie strongest suit right now either. So uh, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. They did just draw, but that's fair. <laughs> well, and I mean, we'll see there. I think there's other, there's other factors that will come into play in indie, especially if they're starting to make trades and things like that. You're going to have guys who think that their jobs are on the hot seat. And so they might step up and try to perform more. Um, who knows? I'm also I'm not convinced those trades they've made made them stronger. I, I think fair. those trades might also be a little bit more about, you know, shifting money around that kind of stuff. I don't know if like they're actually a better team right now with those trades. Uh, yeah. That's yet to be seen. Yeah. Steel Army Twitter, your 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 crew made a uh, similar comment earlier today too, where it was just why like it's not. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that's what I'm setting the the over under eight and a half. Let us know on Twitter what you think. Are you taking the over? Are you taking the under? We'll put a poll up and uh, and we'll sort of look back and see where we are after that, guys. It all starts with Tulsa this Saturday at home. Um, when you when you try to compare the two teams and you sort of look at the stats, they've played one less game. Um, or I'm sorry. Yeah, we have played one less game than they have, but we have six more goals and 13 less scored against us. So, you know, we're we're at a plus 19, I guess, compared to, to where they're at uh, when you look at the goal differential. They've also faced a, a crazy 120 shots so far this season. We have only faced 65. So, you know, we've talked about how our defense at times has been shaky. Uh, they've let roughly twice as many shots on goal as we have. So I think that bodes well for that offensive firepower we just talked about. They also like to get dirty. So Kev, you might enjoy this game a lot. They have 19 more yellow cards and Jeez. four more red cards than we do. We only have one oh red gosh. card all season. So <laughs> this could be a high scoring, scrappy, make sure nobody gets hurt kind of game. Um, Can you repeat again? out of hand early. How many goal? I mean, how many shots um, have they faced so far this season? hundred and twenty shots to our sixty-five. Jeez, they played <laughs> looking, one less game than us. Yes, <laughs> looking looking at their goals against too, that means they're what one out of every four shots goes in. Yeah. Yeah, so our hopes and dream chart makes that make, <laughs> makes me feel pretty good. Right. That. The hopes and dreams yeah. chart's gonna be great. Um, another thing to keep in mind, uh, I don't think you gave their away record. They have won a single yes. away game. That's it. Yes. And Everything they've else they've either they've they've lost eight and they've they've drawn two. Yeah. So now their one away win was this past week, I believe. Um, I can't remember who they I I watched the highlights now, I can't remember who they played this past weekend. Um Oh, it was Birmingham. They beat Birmingham 2-0. Uh, they had goals from Lebo Maloto. So we have yet another week where we might have a former Hound that is going to try to score against us. Nope. So far, Nico Brett and uh, Corey Herzog did not make the bench uh, for Fraudford, but Lebo will definitely play for Birmingham. Um, J.J. Williams uh, got their second goal, uh, and he currently leads the team with nine goals. So he will be the one to watch out for. He's sort of the equivalent of our Cicerone in terms of attacking. Um, have any former hounds scored at Highmark this year? I'm trying to think. I because Ooh, we, Highmark is a good question. Um, we had Parks at Highmark. He didn't score. Yeah, he did not score. Did Francois do anything? I don't no, think so. Not this year. No, yeah. he did last year, but not this year. That's why I've been surprised. I'm trying to think. I'm like, you know, because usually the former hounds are the ones that punish us at home. But this year, I think we've been pretty did, good. I would say Dos Santos didn't score when we played Tampa, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. No. No. I don't. Th- no. I don't even think he played when we played. Yeah. Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. So so far so good. Um, hopefully we'll keep Lebo off the score sheet and we'll keep that record alive, guys. We we talked a little bit about these three games. Obviously, I said I'm taking nine points, so I'm taking the win in this one. I'm gonna say four nil. I think we we Jeez. hit the XG and we do it. We're going big. Josh, what do you think the score line's gonna be? I mean, I was going to go 2-0, but uh, all right. I, I thought I was being pretty bold with, you know, saying a clean sheet at home. Uh, yeah, honestly, 
I, I could see more than two, but I'm, I'm going to be conservative. Say two. I'm going to say two. Kev? I'm going to say one now. I, I I usually don't do that, but I'm going to say one now. I, I, I do think... You think we're going to take like 40 shots and only get one goal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're looking for another one of those hopes and dreams charts where we're just like looking at uh, all the opportunities and be like, wow, look how, how close we could have been. Uh, yeah. 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 I, that's the equivalent I mean, of a $1, bu- you know, <laughs> bid on prices, right? You're just like, right. yeah, $1. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. I, yeah. That's funny. Uh, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. It's just what I feel. But I, I, I like Josh, you mentioned how indie is the game that you're a little worried about. I, I in that context, what the, are we are, are we all in agreement that this is the easiest game in the next three? For sure. Yeah. Yes. Josh said for sure. And I I paused for yeah. a second, like <laughs> for sure. I think so. Yeah, I think I think indie just because it's on the road, and then Memphis at home. Just because Memphis is above us in the table, so I yeah. Say, I, I mean, like this, this is the three. You know, we 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 lost to Charlotte away, so like we can lose to anyone away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Well, that is what we think. Let us know what you think. Like I said, I'll put a poll up at least for the next three games. See who's taking the over, the under on eight and a half, and we'll sort of see where everybody lands. Um, gentlemen, anything else for this episode? I'm, I'm, I said for sure, and I just looked at the standings. And I realized that Indy's worse than Tulsa, but <laughs> I'm still sticking with it because it's also with with Indy. They're a little bit more of a rival type feel. Yeah. Like I feel like they play a little bit harder when they play against us. There's there's more on the line against us than just like a regular team. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I'm I'm correcting myself from like 30 seconds ago. I always mix up Charlotte and Charleston. Yeah, you said Charlotte, and I was like, I don't remember, but. Okay, I, I'm pretty sure you meant Charleston, but yeah, I it's fine. Charleston. I do the same thing all the time. That's why I just say the battery because I'm like, oh, yeah, I know the battery. What yeah. is it about Charlotte and Charleston? And I like I mix up. I do it too. I, I don't. It's like the ch. It just. I think it's yeah. the ch, and then being from Pittsburgh, I'm like, oh, they're both just down there. Like, <laughs> yeah. <they're> just, <laughs> yeah, and whatever. Just, One of those South teams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Agreed. So. Um, all right, real quick, Josh, prediction. Who is wearing the Black Panther costume at the end of the trailer? I think it's Shuri. I think it's going to be her. You think it's Shuri? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know this was a debate. I I thought it was I thought it was his younger sister. Who's yeah, it's her. Shuri. Yeah. We're we're pretty positive it is, but like the fact that they didn't show her in the costume mm. and like it's now it's like wait, maybe it's not. Maybe they're like tricking us. It's going to be Yakoya or like one of the other uh strong female pretty much uh, presence in this movie, which has a lot of them. So it could be yep. really anyone. I, I had this conversation with my son as I was dropping him off to go help run a soccer camp this morning or this afternoon. I completely forgot that like, there's a whole lineage thing to it. Like there's a whole family thing. Uh, my money at this point is either Lupita Nyong'o's character, which I can't remember her name oh, or I think it's be, I think it could be a Koye. I think that they're building this up that like Okoye is so emotionally attached to Wakanda and like what it stands for that Which in like a Okoye? moment she was one of the um like the warriors that protected Got um, it. Yeah. yeah. I could yeah. I I could see her getting to a point of desperation where like everyone's losing and she throws on the 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 Black Panther outfit and so is the bananas. little sister your third I think so. I think that Shuri is is the obvious choice. So I think it, it probably most likely would be Shuri, but um, I would like it. I would like to see it be one of those other two, just as like a like you know mix it up. So yeah, I'm Regardless. just excited for the now increasing likelihood that they're going to bring Doctor Doom into the world because <laughs> he's one of my faves. Yeah. I'm excited that they did a prequel soundtrack to the movie that just came out today. So if you wait, uh, what? Yeah, they did like a Wakanda Forever prelude, uh, and it, it's a like a little. Bit, I haven't listened to it yet, but the soundtrack oh, for the I first movie was great. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah no, let's check that out. Um, cool. Lots of other Marvel announcements that we won't get into this one, just because <laughs> you know 
we gotta wait. We've already lost half. We're we're we're, 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 th- we're three middle aged white guys on a podcast. We're gonna talk about Marvel <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit. Um, uh, it's only true. about the same probability of us having a podcast, uh, which yeah, is right. also very high. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> All right. Well, that is what we think. Let us know what you th- or you know what you think. Let us know who you think what's on the Black Panther costume uh, at the end of the at the end of the trailer. Um, we'll have a little debate there. It'll be fun. This is your weekly reminder that Black Lives Matter. We are proudly part of the Beautiful Game Network, which is home to more than hundred volunteer writers and podcasters covering local soccer. Help us all keep doing what we're doing. Head to bgn.fm and click the donate button to help us cover our expenses. Uh, I realized that I probably should get a new microphone because I was having all sorts of issues. So your donations can sort of help me not have to spend my own money on that, which would be cool. Um, But we appreciate your support regardless. And uh, thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you very, very soon. Cheers.